Hey guys, welcome back to another Hack the Box OSCP prep walkthrough video. Today we're going to be tackling the second box in the Hack the Box machines that are supposed to emulate the OSCP environment. And I'll lean over for one second just so you guys can see uh, where we're at in that list. So I'll throw that up right there. Um, you can go ahead and check that out, maybe see some other machines um, that are going to be coming up in the future. But I did want to do a quick disclaimer very fast before we started this. So this box that we're going to be going through today is rated as insane difficulty. Um, so this will have some uh, fairly complex uh, tactics, exploitation methods, um, things along, along that nature. I don't want to scare anybody off because I do think it's important to watch things through. Even if you don't think that you can do them yourself, you might learn something new, pick up on some small things that I do here and there. Um, but with that out of the way, um, we can go ahead and jump into the walkthrough. I'll catch you guys over in the VM. Now that we are uh, over in the VM, let's go ahead and do a couple things here. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and make um, the terminal text a little bit bigger so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. Um, but the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a directory for the current box just so we have somewhere to store everything. And then I'm gonna CD into that directory. Um, and then I'm going to make another directory for the output of the nmap scans. So let's get rid of that. Um, and then we're going to kick off our nmap scans just so we can um, we can see what's going on here on this box. So we're going to do sudo um, nmap. We're going to do lowercase s capital V capital C. Um, that's going to run the standard scripts on the machine and do service version enumeration. So if it identifies a service, it's going to run the script on that service to gain more information on that service. Then we're going to do, let's actually do v3 so we have a little bit more verbose output. Um, we will paste our IP address in, which I just realized I don't have copied, but mine is 10, 10, 10, 17. Um, and then we're going to do minus lowercase o capital G to output into greppable format. As I kind of explained in the last video, outputting into a greppable format um, allows us to go back and grep the file that we're going to create um, for any particular service just to grab service version numbers really quick. Um, it just makes everything very, very uh, easy to grab when we need it here down the line. So we're actually going to store this in the nmap directory and then we're just going to title it the name of the box. So I'm going to go ahead and kick this scan off and then once it's done running I will get back with you guys. This is done running. Um, I'm actually going to decrease the size so we can fit a little bit more onto the screen. Um, but it looks like we have uh, a bunch of ports open here. So it looks like we are going to have port 22 open for SSH. Um, that is good to know. Potential privilege escalation point here or a way to get a shell on the machine if we are able to find credentials. Um, so definitely want to note that SSH is open. We can also take note of this SSH version, see if there's some like potential critical vulnerability associated with it where we can authenticate to the machine um, for some bizarre reason. Uh, so we'll take note of that mental note. Moving down the line, it looks like we also have port um, 25 open here, which is SMTP. Um, that is simple mail transfer protocol. So it looks like we have um, some sort of email service running. Um, that's interesting. Uh, 110 is open, which is POP3. That's another version of an email protocol. And that is going to be the same thing with port 143, which is IMAP. Uh, so we have three uh, email protocols open. Very interesting. I think they're obviously trying to point to the fact that email is going to be involved in this some way, shape, or form. Um, so we definitely want to take a mental note of those ports being open. I'm also seeing port 443 open here, which means that we have some sort of web server. Um, it looks like it's going to be Nginx um, 1.1, which I believe is a uh, very outdated version of... Uh, um, of engine X. So that's definitely good to know. Um, we can look at some of the other output here um, from the engine X. 
Um, we do have a couple DNS resolutions, so um, it looks like we have the regular uh, brainfuck.com HTB, um, and then looks like we have a super secret subdomain. Um, so that's good to know. Um, usually, if we have some DNS records, we're going to need to add these to the host file, which is uh, located under Etsy host. And I'll show you how to do that in one second. Um, but it's good that we have a web server open because that's typically where I like to start. Um, there's a lot of information that can be had from uh, from web servers. So we also can see here um, that there's an email address associated with the cert, it looks like. Um, yeah, okay, so this is going to be the SSL cert here. Um, we have the domain, the organization. Um, that's where those two DNS records were. We also have an email address. Definitely want to take note of this. That's very interesting that they gave us the email address, and then there's also three email ports open. So um, we will take note of that email address. I'm actually just going to copy that really quick um, so we can take note of that. Um, as we go down, there's the SSL cert. Um, and it also looks like we have a default welcome to Nginx, which means that the DNS records did not load correctly um, for those two um, domains. So we do actually have to add those to Etsy host to be able to view the contents of those web pages, which is what we're going to do right now. So I'm actually just going to make a quick file really quick. I'm just going to um, do nano emails um, and then we're just going to paste that in we're going to control o to write control o to exit so we have that now um, i'm going to go back up and we're going to steal these dns the one dns record because it looked like it had uh, like some pretty complicated typing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add these to Etsy host. And if you're unfamiliar with Etsy host, it's basically just a local version of uh, a DNS or the domain name service. So what we can do is we're going to need sudo to edit it. We're going to do sudo nano um, forward slash Etsy forward slash hosts. And what we want to do is we want to come down and paste the uh, IP address of the box, which is 10, 10, 10, 10, um, 17. Uh, and then we want to tab over and paste our domains. And I believe the other one was just um, brain. Yeah, it should just be brainfuck.pack the box. So we'll just do that. And then we can control O to right, control O to exit. So now we should be able to navigate to those two web pages. We can go ahead and we'll launch a um, web browser here to check both of those out. So what we want to do, since it was specified that it was on port 443, which means it's HTTPS, um, we want to make sure that we specify that. And we'll go to the first. Um, first domain here um, and we'll check this out this might take a second to uh, to load in here but I can uh, I can skip over to this once this loads up it might take a second for it to resolve okay so it did take a second for it to resolve uh, you might get you might get a screen pop up that says accept the risk and continue uh, you'll just want to go ahead and click through that but this is going to be our first um, first landing site here so the first thing that I want to do um, is check out this um, I want to check out this certificate for myself so we can go ahead we'll click on more information and I'll bring this over here so we can see it um, we're gonna want to click on view certificate um, and we can check out everything that's listed over here um, just see the who's signing it um, that's all good information to know. Um, now we just want to try to click around on this website, see if we can do anything. So I do see that there's a page ID um, that's getting passed as a query parameter in the URL. We might be able to try to increment that um, and see if this does anything. So maybe we'll click on seven. Okay, so it does look like we can change that around. Um, so we might have potential uh, file inclusion here, which is good to know. 
Um, we can also go ahead and view the source of the page. We can just control you to bring it up. Um, but we can look and see if we see any technologies like in the extensions of the page like I see PHP here it looks like this is PHP um, one thing that I do want to point out that jumped out to me right away um, if we come back to the home site this says just another WordPress site um, that's good to know um, so we know that it is using WordPress as its content management system and uh, WordPress is littered with vulnerabilities so we can go ahead and launch a WordPress scan against this site um, to see if we can pick up any um, information specific to uh, WordPress. There might be a potential vulnerable plugin, um, so on and so forth. So that's one thing that we can look into. Um, I still want to keep clicking around. Um, let's change this thing around, see if we do have um, anything else that we can find. Oh, interesting. So here's some comments from the devs. It says SMTP integration is ready. Um, and it's pointing to this email address again. So um, the email address I feel like is definitely going to be used in some way, shape, or form. Um, we could even look, I doubt there's cross-site scripting is going to be necessary, but here's a bunch of areas where we can potentially um, inject for cross-site scripting. Um, what if we change this to like a zero? Um, or if we change this to Etsy password, what if we did that? Oops, I want to get rid of that. See if we can do any directory traversal. Um, it doesn't look like we can do directory traversal, but um, there is some insecure um, object references. So we can um, check out this dev update. And it, is, it does have something to do with this email address. So the next thing that I want to do then is launch a WordPress scan. And Kali comes with a um, super helpful WordPress scanner. Um, and it's literally just called WP Scan. So there's a couple different options that we can use. Um, the first thing that we're going to need is to do tac tac URL. Um, and then we just want to type in the URL of our target, which will be that, um, and then we can disable um, the TLS checks with this so that will uh, prevent that um, security warning that's going to pop up from stopping our scanner. So we want to do that and then I usually just do um, TAC E as well. TAC E is going to uh, enumerate everything so vulnerable plugins um, potential users on the site we did see that admin user which I can go back and show really quick um, I did see it I didn't point it out but we did see that there is a valid admin user on this um, website which is super good to know so I will go ahead and launch this WordPress scan and then I'll get back to you guys in one second once we have the results pulled up Okay, so our WP scan finished running, but there is one caveat that I forgot to mention before I launched the initial scan. So um, if you want to get the complete uh, output for vulnerabilities for plugins, um, things on the website, so on and so forth, you do need to sign up for an API token with WP scan. Um, the API token is free, um, and uh, I will put the link on screen and in the description below so it can be utilized, um, to just accessed really easily um, and then that can also be included in the scan uh, with tac tac api dash token and then you just paste it straight onto the command line run it and it'll give you more output I'm obviously not going to be showing um, mine <laughs> for obvious reasons, but we will look at some of our output here. So we did find quite a bit wrong with this particular um, website and some plugins that it has. So it has six uh, vulnerabilities that were identified. Um, it looks like there is authenticated SQL injection. 
um, which is not going to really apply to us. Um, we do have some type of RCE in the support plus, which might actually make sense because there was a way to submit tickets. Um, so that's in the ticketing system, and we saw that on the home page. We might want to take note of this. Um, it looks like these RCEs are all associated with the ticketing system. So I'm uh, going to imagine that we are uh, we're going to be exploiting this RCE in the the ticketing system. We also found out um, about a couple users, um, and I'm skipping a lot of the things that it didn't find here, but um, it also give us the users identified. We knew about this admin account um, because that was posted on the dev uh, page where we just changed the number of the page being referenced in the URL query string. So we knew that this was a valid user account. We did not know about this user, however. So now we have both an admin and an administrator user on this, um, on this website. So one thing that we want to do now, I'm going to scroll back up to uh, to what this is called. It looks like WP Support Plus. So let's just, I'm just going to copy that. Um, one thing that we can do to find the vulnerabilities or if there's an exploit available um, is we can pull it down from uh, from search exploits. So we can just use search exploit. Um, that's an old, from an old box, but we'll just search exploit WP Support Plus um, and see if there is anything for us here. Okay, so it looks like there is, which is good. So if we go ahead and uh, if we can copy the, the first one down there, we're just going to use, um, this is going to be in um, user share, oops, I need user share exploit db, <laughs> copy the end there, but it's gonna be in PHP, um, web apps, and then we are going to do 34, 589.txt, and see what we have. Okay, so it looks like there's a couple of different things that we can do here. Um, that's a SQL injection, full path disclosure, directory traversal, and then broken authentication. So we can try a couple of different things here. Let's check out um, what else um, is open here. We'll try this 41, um, 4100. Let's see if that is any different. We'll just paste that in and then do that text. Um, okay, so this is a privilege escalation. Let's see, you can log in as anyone without knowing a password because of an incorrect cookie. Um, that is extremely interesting, and I think this is probably what we're going to use here. If this, um, if this all lines up, we're going to do this. So what we'll do, um, we will just grab, um, we'll just grab that. And we will just save that to a file called privesc.html. And then we'll paste that in. Um, it looks like we're gonna need to change some things here. So it, by default, it goes to this administrator user, um, which is uh, which is good because that's a, a valid user that we found. Um, so maybe we can um, maybe we can just utilize this script here to try to log in as the administrator user first. So what we want to do is we want to control O to write that file and then control X to exit. Um, and then we will try to um, attack this web application with this vulnerability and see if we can get some unauthenticated access. Okay, so one thing that I actually failed to mention was that we need to edit a couple things um, in our privilege escalation file. Um, and what we can do here 
is we first of all need to edit um, this from HTTP to HTTPS. Um, and that is because there's nothing running on port 80, it's all over 443, so we do need to specify that. The second thing that we also are gonna need to fill in here is the domain that we want to send this request to. And the reason that we need to actually put this in is you can think of we're, we're gonna host this file locally, um, and this is going to be an HTTP form. So when we submit it, um, the action, it's gonna send a post request to this endpoint, um, and then it's going to use this information here to set the cookie, and what's actually happening on the back end is it's taking this information, and for whatever reason, it handles it incorrectly. Um, it allows you to log in as the username that you specify, but just forego the password, because the authentication is being done within the cookie header. So what we'll do, um, we just need to change this to HTTPS, um, specify the endpoint that we're sending this post request to, um, and then we can just control O to write that file, Control O to exit, um, and then what we can do is just minimize that. We will open this up in a browser. So we'll just double click on this, open it up in a browser. As you can see, that form just kind of auto populates there um, with the administrator user. Um, so then all we need to do is load the other page in another tab and we can load that up here. Um, so it looks like we have that ready to go. Now, when we click the login button, like I said, we're gonna send a post request to this endpoint. This endpoint will handle um, setting that cookie for us. And then once the cookie is set, um, we should be able to log in as the username that we specified, which in this case is administrator. So let's go ahead and log in. Um, and now if we come over to this page, we can see that this um, request was submitted. Um, if we refresh the page over here, you can see that we're now logged in as the administrator. So let's go ahead and check out what we can do with the administrator um, cookie, see if we have anything um, uh, of interest. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot. Uh, maybe if we do edit my profile, uh, we can see we can see some different stuff. Maybe we might be able to change the password. That's interesting. Um, but again, we already have access to the account, so I'm not sure why um, or how that would help us. Okay, so it looks like there's not a ton that we can actually do um, with this user. Um, we might want to try the other user um, that we saw, which if we go back um, to the one site here, if we just go back to the home page here, um, there we did have this admin user here. So let's go ahead, we're gonna edit our um, file here and we're gonna change this to log us in as admin. Um, I guess you could also just change the file on the fly there, but I just wanna show you guys how you could do this automatically. So you just control O, control X, um, and then we'll clear that, get rid of that. Um, we'll just kind of repeat the same steps just to show you what this would look like. So we'll go here again. Um, we're gonna go back to our website log in here okay so this is loaded um, we're going to send this request but we're going to send it as the admin user this time that loaded so now if we refresh this time we should be logged in as admin okay so here we go now we might have a little bit more functionality and it looks like we definitely do so um, the one thing that comes to mind and that I can see uh, right off the bat is plugins, uh, just because there's a one next to it. I think it's worth uh, worth checking out here. Um, we can see that there's a couple of plugins. This is the plugin, this WP Support Plus is the one that allowed us to actually bypass um, the 
login right now. Um, I did see that here's this SMTP plugin, um, which is what was mentioned on the dev post. So if we go ahead and check out the settings here, um, we can see that we get this email address again. Um, and if we come down, we can actually see the there's an SMTP password saved here. So what we can do is if we just control, you yeah, actually, no, we don't want to control you. We want to control shift I. Um, and then we'll use this pointer thing so you can see exactly what's going on here. Um, and this is just kind of a neat trick. Um, a lot of people will set the, um, the HTML type here to password, um, which will mask the password in clear text, but the value is actually in the source code by itself here. So we just got the SMTP password for that email address. So now what we can do is we can go back um, and try to use Netcat to interact with um, the POP3 service and see if we can read this user's email addresses, see if there's any interesting information in there. Okay, so now that we have that email password, let's go ahead and use Netcat to connect to our host. Um, and what, how we'll do that, we'll just use netcat-nv for no, name no DNS name resolution on the host, um, although you could. And then we'll do v for a little bit more verbose output. That way when we're interacting with the service, we can see exactly what's going on. Uh, and then we're gonna specify, specify port 110 for the POP3 service. So if we go ahead and connect here, the first thing that we're gonna need to do is authenticate. And we can do that with um, specifying the user and if you remember right it said the username was this Orestis um, so we'll get the OK response. Um, now we need to specify the password. I am going to copy and paste in the password from where we just got it on the admins panel. Um, and it looks like we're logged in now. So one thing that we can do now that we're logged in, which is really cool, is we should be able to potentially list the email addresses, or not the email addresses, the actual emails within the inbox itself. And it looks like we have two um, messages in the inbox. Um, we have one and two, and the way to read these is we wanna use the retrieve command. So that's R-E-T-R, um, and then you specify the number. So we'll read the first email um, to go here. Um, and it looks like this is addressed to our email. Um, it's basically just saying that this is uh, been correctly set up on WordPress. So it looks like it's just a WordPress um, email saying that it was set up correctly. Um, so nothing really too interesting there. Um, I wonder if we retrieve the second one, uh, what we got going on here. So it looks like um, this is from root at um, the box and it says, hi there, your credentials for the secret forum are below. Okay, so uh, I think the secret forum is the one that it was referring to that other site that was open. It was like um, super secret .brainfuck .hack the box. So I'm assuming this would be our credentials for that, although we haven't really looked at it. Um, let's go ahead and we'll copy these, um, we'll copy that password um, and we will exit out of here with control C. Uh, let's get rid of this and see what we got going on. So if we come down to emails, let's just open emails again and save this password. Um, we'll just paste that in there really quick, quick write it, exit. Um, so now what we can try to do um, is we can try to go to that other uh, websites. Now we can come over and try to get to this, um, we'll try to get to this other subdomain. So if I remember right, it was just lead speak, so it was super, see, super secret. Yes, okay, so that is what we were working with. I'm actually gonna move this really quick so I can, uh, so I can accept some of these terms. Um, but what we want to do, whoops, we'll go over to advanced and you'll have to do this the first time, but we'll just accept the risk and continue. Um, and then we'll come over here. Um, so it looks like we need to log in, although there is like one thread. Um, okay, so that's not gonna give us anything. What we do wanna do is log in as that user though. So we'll go into Orestus and then we will paste in the password and 
log in here. Okay, so we are logged in to the secret forum. Hopefully we can grab some more information from here. Um, I do see two very interesting threads. Uh, one, we have SSH access. Um, so it looks like this Arrestus user is a little pressed about something um, and he has to use an SSH key to log in because the password was disabled. Um, so it says like they want to paste the key here um, for everybody to see and he says he's opening up an encrypted thread for them to talk on so maybe that is this one okay so it looks like this is going to have what we want we even see there's something uh 10 10 10 17 you can tell um, this is a URL um, because we have what should be HTTPS um, dot or colon forward slash RIP um, and then a bunch of nonsense. So I'm thinking my first thought here would be something along the lines of a Caesar cipher or a substitution cipher. Um, although we might have some slight variation because if this was just a simple substitution cipher, um, HTTPS, um, the TT here in the middle would be the same letter because every letter that you'd be substituting for it would repeat. So. Um, that means that say like N was substituting for T, you'd see M N N, which you don't see here. So that means that there's probably, this could be like a rot, um, which is a rotation cipher. Um, it could be a veneer cipher, which would be uh, moved over, uh, basically shifted, the alphabet shifts. It's kind of like a substitution cipher, but you use a key for that. Um, so it could be something like that. That's actually kind of where my mind is going right now because um, it just straight up looks like a substitution cipher. Um, and on top of that, um, we aren't seeing repeating letters and there is, this is literally titled key. So um, I would imagine we're, there's go, we're going to need to reverse the key from the way that these things are encrypted and uh, we will do that. Now we'll probably try to uh, we'll probably try to automate this, write a script to uh, see if we can extract the key from this. I'm coming back here. Um, I ended up trying to make a Python script to um, decode what was going on on this forum, but I found it pretty difficult um, to do. I kind of got stonewalled by it a little bit for a while um, because we didn't really know either like the key that it was using or we're trying to extract the key, but it, we couldn't really have anything that matched up one for one for a while. Um, so I ended up doing some Googling and I found a website um, that's really good uh, that just has it pre-built in for us already. Um, so that's what we will use. And going back and trying to find some things that might match up um, that we could use, uh, I noticed that every single time that this Arrestus um, user posted something, he was signing it with this seemingly the same quote at the end here. Um, and you can tell it is going to be a veneer cipher because it's the same exact amount of characters every single time um, in the same positions but the characters are changing. Um, so we do know that there's that is the key that we're going to need to extract. I mean, if we come back over just to the SSH thing, we can see that this is the same number of letters in the same number of positions every single time. So it is a veneer cipher that he was using. Now, uh, we know that this Arrestus um, space hacking for fun and profit is going to end up becoming uh, this. So what we can go ahead and do is we can take this um, and we'll just come over here and we'll put it in the message um, and then we will get rid of that. We'll just get rid of all of the spaces. Um, whoops. Just get rid of all the spaces really quick um, so that it's all put together. Um, and then we'll come over and we will put our passphrase in um, back over on here, which should just be this Arrestus um, hacking for fun and profit. So if we control that, post that in here um, and get rid of our spaces, we should 
be able to extract some sort of repeating key um, because the key should just run over and over again if the length of the message is longer, which I'm assuming it is. So now we can see we can automatically see it's updating. Um, it's running over. We see CK my brain fuck my brain fuck okay so it looks like um fuck my brain is actually going to be the key here for uh the passphrase so what we can do then is put this in reverse and enter uh fuck my brain as the key and see if we can decrypt that url okay so if we take um if we take this copy the key so now we'll put that as the passphrase, um, and then we will put our message in, which we want to do the message that holds the URL. So let's go ahead and we will grab all of this here. We'll copy that and we'll paste it in our message. So there we go, we actually look at that, look at what we have um, the entire message. It says, here you go, you stupid fuck. I hope you remember your pass key, your key password because I don't. So um, there is going to be a password on this key. And if we look at this, um, this is actually an ID RSA file. So if you remember, SSH was open on this machine. That's kind of like what this whole thing's been about. Um, but ID RSA is going to let us authenticate um, to the machine via SSH just with the key. Now, it looks like there's a password on the key itself. Um, but, you know, fortunately, um, uh, John the Ripper actually has a utility where we should just be able to crack this password. So what we can do is we'll come over to um, this URL and we will download this once again. So sorry, I'm moving my face out of the way, but we will continue. Um, and then we will actually come back over here um, and we're going to save this file. So we will take this file. Um, whoops, we'll just copy that. Um, and we will come over to our folder here and paste in that IDRSA key. Um, and then what we'll do here next is we will go over to John the Ripper, crack the pass key that is on um, the IDRSA file. And then we should be able to use that IDRSA file to uh, authenticate to the machine and hopefully get the um, first user shell on the machine. The first thing that we want to, or the end goal that we want here is to crack that password on IDRSA. Um, so one thing I wanna show you guys really quick um, is if you have um, the latest version of Kali, or I think this has even been supported for a while, um, then what you're gonna have on your machine is a compressed version of RockU. And RockU is basically a word list for passwords. Um, so what we can do, um, we'll actually get rid of cat. I just wanted to show you that it'll autocomplete. So we have Rocky. What you can do is we can see it's .gz um, compressed. So if we just do gunzip um, on Rocky, whoops, we're going to need pseudo permissions for this. We can just unzip this um, file and then we'll use it as a word list. Okay, so now that we have that um, unzipped, what we wanna do is we want to use um, a uh, SSH utility that John the Ripper comes with. So we'll do Python um, and then we'll do user share um, and then we're gonna go John and then after John, we're gonna do SSH to John, which is the script that comes pre-installed. And basically what you're going to do is give it an ID RSA key um, and then it'll format it for uh, cracking. So we'll do uh, the ID RSA because that is uh, the file that we want to crack. Um, and then let's just call this, um, we'll do it uh, user dot, uh, dot priv. So we have that set up and now what we can do, um, I am going to have to cut this out while this runs because this will take some time, um, but we're just going to use John now. So that Python script basically formatted this file for us. Um, and now what we can do is we'll do tac tac word list 
Um, you can kind of see that we've been setting everything up. We're going to user um, share word lists and then rocku.txt. And then what we want to do this on is we want to run this on user.priv. So I'll go ahead, I'll run this, um, and I'll get back to you guys with the results when this is done running. Okay, so as you guys can see, um, this actually finished way faster than I thought it was going to, uh, but we cracked it and it looks like we have the password right here. So I'm just going to um, add this to emails again really quick, just as our little password list uh, accumulates, but we'll just write that. Um, now what we should be able to do is we should be able to do SSH um, I, uh, and then we'll do IDRSA to authenticate. So that I um, is basically a, a tag for identity. It's like an ID file. So we can use that IDRSA as our ID file. Um, and then we can use the username. Uh, and a neat thing that you can do, I'm not sure if uh, you, you guys are familiar with this, familiar with this technique, but you can actually just, uh, you don't even have to really specify the IP address. You can just use the domain name if you if you really want. Um, so we can try to do that. Uh, we should be able to um, authenticate with our um, key now. <laughs> so I totally forgot to change the permissions of, um, of our ID file. So what we do need to do is we need to do schmod uh, 400 and then we need to run that on the IDRSA. Um, right now it will block you because just by default the permissions are too open um, and it's saying it's an unprotected key file. Um, so we can try this one more time now. So now if we try to authenticate here, uh, we can enter the passphrase for IDRSA, um, which I don't have copied apparently. So let's go back and copy that. Um, let's just go ahead and make sure that that is copied. And then we can try to authenticate here. So we can go ahead and paste that in. And now we are officially logged in as the user. So this will be our first user flag. So I will go ahead and cat out user.txt just as a little bit of proof. Hey guys, I just wanted to jump in here really quick. Um, so after speaking with a handful of very close friends in the InfoSec space um, and people that actually already have their OSCP certification, um, the privilege escalation path on this machine in specific is uh, very out of scope uh, for what we're trying to accomplish with this video series. I want to keep this video series very tailored towards prepping for the OSCP um, and I also want to show people uh, the true nature and difficulty of the exam. So I don't want to be including content that is uh, way overly difficult for no reason um, and you would never even expect to see it on the exam. So I just wanted to note that the privilege escalation piece for this machine will not be included in this uh, in this video. Um, so we will be ending the video here today, um, but uh, there will be other privilege escalation on different boxes. Um, just for this machine in particular, we will not be covering it. Uh, right now. Might do a separate video in the future on how to do the privilege escalation for this box, um, but for this video specific purposes, uh, it is uh, too difficult and it doesn't fit the uh, purpose for this series. So thank you guys again for watching all the way through. I know this was a very difficult box. Um, this is something that you might see on the upper end of the difficulty for the OSCP exam, but if you made it all the way through, congratulations. Uh, go get yourself a drink. It's been a long ride. Um, but thank you guys again, and I will see you in the next one.